China's President Xi Jinping has just assumed his third term in office. He has been in power for 10 years and since he began his term has backed a stronger Chinese military and greater Chinese influence in international affairs. With the new Silk Road, China is building bridges, ports, railways and roads in more than 70 countries. Along its disputed border with India in the Himalayas, China has been gradually expanding its troop presence and building new infrastructure to insist on its territorial claims. Even in the Arctic, it is expanding its influence, it is investing in the Russian Arctic gas fields. But where China seems to want to focus its power is in the South China Sea. Taiwan, which China claims is its own territory, is at the center of tensions in the region. In fact, in August 2022, China carried out day-long military maneuvers around Taiwan, which included the launch of missiles overflying the island for the first time. China's intentions in this region are so clear that it is now building artificial islands. So the questions are, why is China building so many artificial islands? Why are they breaking international laws? And why are they an easy target for its enemies? The South China Sea has been an area of controversy for decades. But in 1982, the United Nations established a treaty regulating international maritime rights. For example, it created exclusive economic zones for each nation, which determine the area where a nation has rights to natural resources beneath the surface of the sea. The exclusive economic zone extends 200 miles from a nation's coast, but anything beyond that is considered international waters. Following this logic, China has violated the rules of this 1982 treaty that most countries signed, including China. It has violated it because it is building artificial islands far beyond 200 miles off its coast, very close to the Philippines, Vietnam, and Brunei. China's strategy has been this. In the South China Sea, there is a group of islands called Spratly, which China has been claiming for the past decade. In fact, China claims almost 90% of the South China Sea. The Asian giant argues that it has historical right over these islands because they were first discovered by the Han Dynasty 2,000 years ago. For this reason, China has been using a line that marks its maritime border, occupying practically the entire South Sea, but which most experts consider meaningless in terms of international law as it invades the exclusive economic zones of other nations. But since it is difficult to lay claim to a bunch of small, uninhabited islands, China's strategy has been to construct buildings and ports on these small territories. It has even settled a few people, then enlarges these small pieces of land, and then turns them into military bases with missiles, radar systems, and airstrips. Vietnam and the Philippines have done something similar on a smaller scale. But China went a step further by building entirely new artificial islands. This is despite the fact that in 2015, Xi Jinping claimed on his visit to the United States that he had no intention of militarizing the South China Sea. For now, the disputes remain only in the legal and diplomatic fields, only occasionally erupting into minor clashes. In July 2016, an international tribunal in The Hague ruled in favor of the Philippines, which accused China of trespassing on its territory in the sea. But China defied the ruling and it seems unlikely that the law will be enforced. From the Chinese point of view, there are several strong reasons for ignoring the ruling and increasing its influence in this area by installing military bases on the artificial islands. First, to be able to control this important waterway. An estimated 30% of the world's maritime trade flows through the South China Sea. It is a globally vital sea route connecting China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, the Philippines, among others, with India, the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. That is why China is so obsessed with this region. It is the world's largest exporter, and its need for energy for its industry is enormous. It is the second largest importer of oil, and most of this resource comes to it by sea, crossing the Strait of Malacca from Saudi Arabia. Likewise, most of its exports use this same route. Let's think about the fact that so many people live in this part of the world. Almost 30% of the world's population lives in this region. Apart from China's 1.4 billion people, there are 270 million in Indonesia, 113 million in the Philippines, and 98 million in Vietnam, to name a few. So China wants to have control of this area to make sure it can trade with the rest of the world and get enough oil and gas to sustain its economy. And China's concern is not to be underestimated. 
This sea route is surrounded by U.S. allies who, in the event of a conflict, could block China's access to the Pacific and Indian Oceans. The Philippines, Indonesia, and Vietnam are moving closer and closer to the United States. Not to mention Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan, which are historical allies of the U.S. So China is preparing to gain more control over the South Sea by building military bases on artificial islands in the event of a conflict over Taiwan. Secondly, another reason for China to build these artificial islands is that this territory has enormous oil and natural gas reserves. For example, it is estimated that there are 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in the area, and that amount measured per square kilometer shows that it is one of the largest potential natural gas reserves in the world. So controlling the islands would allow it to exploit the area's resources. However, not everything is so positive for China. Although these islands are home to missile systems, radars, runways with capacity for heavy aircraft, fuel storage facilities, among other advantages, the truth is, if you look at a map, you can see that the islands are a long way from mainland China. The distance means that support ships would need more than 20 hours to reach the islands if they were attacked. The islands are also too far away to deploy the J-16, China's most advanced strike fighter. The fighter simply would not be able to patrol the area because of the distance between mainland China's military bases and the bases on the islands. So the artificial islands are an easy target, although China is probably aware of that and is not that concerned because the country that were to attack these islands, even if they are not recognized by international law as Chinese territory, China would consider it as an attack on its territory, and that would imply an inevitable response from the country with the second most powerful military forces in the world. So the simple threat of China retaliating may be enough to prevent the islands from suffering an attack. What they may suffer is an attack by nature, as they are in the ocean exposed to damage from tidal and tropical weather. However, they may not need external forces to sink them. According to The Economist magazine, there are rumors that the concrete used in the foundations of these islands is crumbling. But regardless of whether these rumors are true, the reality is that China considers the South Sea essential to its survival and is slowly but ambitiously increasing its influence. Likewise, if there is any country that knows how to play the long game, that is China. So these small military advances make us think that a conflict in this region of Asia seems to be inevitable in the coming years. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.